What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, we're going to talk about what makes Tom Glavin so effective using these pitch combos. So, Tom Glavin is arguably the best pitcher in the game. We're going to do this for a lot of pitchers. I'm going to knock these out. So, he's got the sinker, the circle change, the sweeping curve, the slider, the four seam fastball. He has 99 pitch control on the sinker, 99 on the circle change, 94 on the sweeping curve, 92 on the slider, and 97 on the four-seam fastball. So his control is absolutely elite. He has 97 pitch break on the sinker, 99 on the circle change, 92, 90, and 82. I have him at parallel four. We're going to jump into a game versus the computer, and I'm going to show you all the spots that make him so lethal. So if you want to get better at pitching, this is going to be the video for you. All right, so in this video, I want you to ignore the computer. I'm just playing against the computer so that I can go into a game and show you the different locations. I don't care if the computer hits 70 home runs or strikes out. 300 times it doesn't matter like what I want you to take away from this is this is where you want to spot your pitches with Tom Glavin to be super effective now the hardest pitch to hit versus Tom Glavin when you're hitting is the sinker about right here up and in something about it is extremely deceptive it is almost impossible to hit the way it comes out of his hand the way it hits right here it's very 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 difficult to see that pitch the other spot you can put the the slider is right or the sinker is right down here. You can put the sinker right down here as well. So either up here or down there, just so that your opponent doesn't really, you know, get into a, a rhythm of it's always up and in or it's always down and in. To hit this up and in sinker from Tom Glavin, you almost have to set your PCI there and swing early and know it's coming. Other than that, good luck. Once you have two strikes on your opponent, you know, you set them up with the sinker. You put this slider right over here. You put the slider right over here. They have to respect it. They're going to swing and miss a ton of this pitch. And even the computer did there. Pitch is super, super effective. Now, if you're facing a lefty, you put that sinker right back on the inside. Just dot that sinker on the inside. Super hard to pitch to deal with. You can put the slider down over here, low and away get them to pretty much that they're just trying to guard that sinker on the inside they're never going to be able to hit that slider on the outside now the sweeping curve i don't use it too often you could always dot on the outside with the sweeping curve too you might want to put this pitch like below the zone uh to be honest with you as well as the circle change you might want to put, put below the zone you can kind of dot this pitch as well but it's a little bit more difficult he's going to swing over the top we had a you know two strikes he's going to swing over the top of that now, if they do have a righty, if they do in Mancini, I find you can try to spot the circle change like low and inside to a righty here. But the thing is, sometimes the pitch hangs and it hangs about right here. And that pitch is very, very hittable. So what I recommend that you do is you spot this circle change on the outside to a righty. Spot it down over here. They almost always swing over the top of it. That one kind of went a little bit outside, but even like right here is a good spot for this circle change on the outside. It's going to keep you out of the zone. If you can get it over like this quadrant, but just a little bit low, they're going to swing over the top of it a lot. But your main, and you can always, to a right, you can always throw the sinker up and away, just like spot a little bit outside the zone, get him to swing over it. But really, these inside sinkers to righties are almost impossible to deal with. They're just so difficult to deal with. And then again, you take that slider just a couple inches on the inside. That's kind of why I like to use this strike zone view, is because I can really see what happened was when I was using other views and I try to throw outside the zone, I like threw too much outside the zone. And this view is what most people are going to hit from. So you can really see where you want to spot the pitch. Just spot it about right there on the inside with that slider. And they're going to swing over the top of it. CPU does whatever CPU does, but a lot, a lot of times. And if they, if they just start like laying off this slider for whatever reason, you can just spot the sinker back on the inside. And that's all you really need to do to be extremely dominant with Tom Glavin. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Fernando Valenzuela. He's also one of the more dominant pitchers in the game. And I'm going to show you how to use him correctly. So with Fernando, it's all about the screwball and it's all about the circle change. Those are the two pitches that you need to really focus on. You don't really need to use the curveball and you don't really need to use the fastball. The screwball, you're going to spot low and in, just, just like that. And you're going to be able to hit this pitch and get so much confidence in that screwball. It's ridiculous. It makes them really difficult to hit. So we're just going to go screwball low and in on the first two pitches to a righty. 
uh, the best we can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use that circle change low and in. We're going to use the circle change low and in. This pitch goes like 68 miles an hour. That time they didn't swing over the top of it, but you're going to get a ton of strikeouts doing this. Just quick circle change. Uh, the CPU didn't swing over that, but that's why I'm saying ignore what the CPU does because the CPU just does not hit like a human. Let's say they lay off it though for whatever reason. Just go right back to the screwball. And I apologize, my webcam's been acting up today. Um, but yeah, if they lay off, just go right back to that pitch. You can even start off with the circle change, but I prefer to throw the circle change with two strikes because they're going to swing over the top of it. And it's just so slow that no one can really keep their bat back that far enough. And then on the screwball, I don't know what it is about the screwball, but it's really difficult to contact the screwball. It's like your bat, it just like goes like right through your bat so often. I'm not really sure why that is, but again, just pound that, that screwball low and inside to righties and then hit them with that circle change when they, they have two strikes. Lots of times the CPU, see a lot of, a lot of players are just swung over the top of that. You can also move the screwball up a little bit, you know, move the screwball up in the zone. If you feel like they're sitting there PCI low in the zone, you know, you can move it up a little bit and throw it on like the outside or you can move the circle change. You can maybe move it up a little bit. I don't really need to. Really, honestly, what I can do is you can just spam that screwball low and in, low and in, low and in, and then two strikes, spam the circle change, and just kind of mix it up here and there. Maybe you have 0-1, you go to the circle change, but it's really the only two pitches you need. And then the lefty, you don't do too much different against the lefty, except for you just spot the screwball low and into the lefty. It kind of naturally like tails that direction anyway. That's what a screwball does. So it's nice for the lefty to tail it in like that. And then you can throw the circle change on the outside part. Just throw the circle on the outside part. They're going to swing over the top of it. Uh, the fastball, I do not use very often. I mean, very, very rarely. Maybe like three times, if that, throughout an entire start, I'll use that fastball because it's just... If they if they pick it up, it's probably a home run. It only goes 90 miles an hour and it's straight. So you don't really need to use that fastball. The curveball, if you're going to use the curveball, just spot the curveball below the zone. You don't need to use the curveball to like try to dot. Like you're not you're trying to dot with that screwball and you're trying to dot really with the circle change. So fastball and curveball don't really need to use it. If you're going to use the fastball, you might as well use it to a lefty also and just try to hit them on the inside. But this. It's really, really easy to throw with uh, Fernando just because he's got that, like, it's very easy to do that motion for the screwball and hit it 100% over and over again. And then the circle change, you're going to get better at doing the circle change motion. Just make sure when it starts in the middle, you just start up. That's really the key. You know, it starts in the middle, you just start up and go up and around, and you'll be dominant with that. All right, the next picture we're going to take a look at is Corbin Burns. Super, super effective. Sinker, cutter, slider, change up curveball. So we're facing a lefty here. Sinker, we're going to try to spot right up and in on him. And if we can get him, they're going to stare at that pitch a lot. That's a super hard pitch to hit. We're going to use that cutter just off the inside. Try to get him to jam, to jam it or to swing over the top of it. We can use this cutter anywhere, though. We can use it up and in. We can use this cutter low and away. Very effective low and away. Very effective up and away as well. It's just a very, very solid pitch. Now towards the righty. Again, we're going to jam that sinker on the inside. Maybe o, like O and O. Uh, the cutter we can put down over here. Like down over here. Throw that cutter. We can also... Uh, he's probably going to strike out, so I'm going to be careful here. But we can throw the sinker up and away. And get him to stare at that. And then once they think it's a sinker up and away... We can throw the cutter like up and away again. And lots of times they're going to roll over, especially if you got like a pull hitter like Mike Trout or something like that. I don't almost like don't like to throw Trout on the inside. I almost, I feel like I can get Mike Trout out a lot by just throwing like up over here. And he just pulls it on the ground for like a little roller to the shortstop, stuff like that. Now, again with the lefty, another very effective pitch that you can use is this change up. You throw the change up low and in. And that changeup will dot a lot or they'll swing over the top of it. Curveball, you can throw it into the dirt or you can throw the curveball like out on the outside corner and just try to dot the, the outside corner with the curveball. Cutter just on the inside. Have him swing over the top of it. Hopefully he checks along. Now he went over the top of it. Some more stuff with Corbin Burns here. 
a sinker inside is going to be the toughest pitch to hit because it's so fast and it, it just breaks in on their hands. You throw like a cutter low and into like you can really mix it up. Now that is a hard cutter at 98 miles an hour. Throw it away. Look at that movement that he has on it. But that cutter right here, you could throw the inside cutter under his hands. You can also throw the cutter right down here. You know, throw it for a strike and keep him honest. Sinker inside. And maybe he's starting to time like both those pitches. So now let's go change up low and inside. It's just going to be a little bit slower. I'm going to swing over the top of it. Maybe we'll go slider up and away. Just because we've been pitching inside a lot. Now let's put this cutter back on the inside. Stays true. Catches the outside part of the, the plate. He rolls over on it and flies out. Now we're going to take a look at Oral Hershizer. He's just a dot machine. I swear this is the card I throw more perfects with than any other card. Because he's got such a long release. But it's very similar. We're going to throw that sinker up on the inside. And he's just a perfect, perfect machine. Like he just dots everything. We'll throw that cutter over here. Dot that up, get him to roll over on it. And he's just, he's going to hit where you throw it. <laughs> he's really going to hit where you throw it. Swing over the top. We got him. Very similar in that regard. Uh, the curveball, I mean, maybe we throw a curveball every so often. I don't really like to throw the curveball too much because I think it's too easy to recognize. But we're going to throw that on two strikes. We can throw the change up just where we want it, low and into a lefty. Dot City only 77 miles an hour on that change up. So it's going to get them over the top of it. Just it's going to get them off speed. They're trying to like think I'm going to hit the sinker or the cutter. Well, probably not if you're going to hit the change up, you know, because now you're going to be so out in front of it that you're just going to swing over the top of the change up. We got a righty up here. Normal combo would be throw it inside with the sinker. We can even throw like a cutter anywhere. The cutters are just so easy to throw because of the uh, the motion. We can throw the cutter anywhere. We can throw the change up low and away also. Get them to roll over on it. I mean, that's just nasty right there. And throw a little sinker on the inside. Get them to swing over the top. Maybe we'll throw the cutter just on the outside over here. Just on the outside. Get them to roll it over the shortstop. Or just miss it entirely. Not going to do anything with that pitch. That's a real hurt sizer for you. All right, now we're going to talk about Corey Kluber. Again, he's got the sinker, the cutter, the slur, the four seam, and the changeup. Super effective. Again, sinkers up and in. We love sinkers up and into righties. One of the hardest pitches to hit in the game. He can throw his cutter and his slurve anywhere, though. He has 99 control on his slurve and on his cutter. So he can throw it really literally anywhere. You can throw it up and in. You can dot it low and in. You can throw it literally wherever. Like that that is the go to pitch that you're gonna want to go to with Kluber is this cutter. Throw it up and away. And it's just a dot machine. Slurve the same way. I mean the slurve is an absolute dot. Throw that thing low or and away to a righty. That had uh, kind of a hoop. I messed that up, but like when it gets dotted, let's see we got fifty nine percent of it's too fast. That pitch just looks like it's going right down the middle and then it just breaks right down to the corner. Great pitch on two strikes. Great pitch on two strikes. Maybe we'll get another righty. <clears throat> we got a lefty here, but if it was a righty, we could go sinker up and away, cutter like up and away, or sinker high and in, cutter up and away, and then slurve low and away. Good luck, especially if they're all dotted. You know, we can go the sinker on uh, in or under his hands to so a righty. Throw the uh, I had the slurve selected. Throw the cutter again just on the inside half. So it looks like it's either going to be a sinker or it's going to be a cutter. And you have to decide basically as the hitter at the last second what it's going to be. You can throw that slurve, low it inside to him. Just throw it down here. Good luck with that. And then we can throw that cutter really wherever. Like we can dot this cutter with the 99 control so easily. We can throw it on the outside half. If we feel like he's just been on the inside too much. Trying to take away the inside. Fastball, we don't need to throw the fastball at all. But then again, you can throw this change up, low and inside, just to the you know change speeds. That change up, swing them over the top. 
So that's that's really how you use Corey Kluber. Another super effective pitcher. I'm really glad that we got to Corey Kluber. All right, now let's talk about Araldis Chapman, the best left-handed reliever in the game. Maybe the best reliever in the game. Just so difficult to deal with. You just never get happy seeing him come into the game. So he's got this four-seam fastball to a righty. You can really use this four-seam fastball away. Uh, it's going to get you a lot of called strikes. It's going to get you to roll over. It's just like a good spot for to throw. Uh, CPU is not swinging, but again, or the CPU. The sinker is fantastic like right here. Like a low and in sinker like this is difficult to deal with. Uh, especially when it's spotted. Very difficult for this just anyone to deal with. Bec I miss that one up bad. But... When you can spot this thing down here, it's going to be really, really difficult to, to deal with. And then you can just combo that slider on the inside, just like that, like we did with Tom Glavin. And they kind of respect that inside sinker that could be called for a strike. So that slider, you can throw it. And so you could also do something like this. You could start sinker, right? Start sinker, get the first strike. I'm going to let that go. Please go foul. Please go foul. Yes. All right. So you can start sinker on the first pitch. Second pitch, you can go to the slider. Give him a swing and miss at that or chase on that. And then you could either go back up to an, a high and in fastball or you could go back to the sinker again in the same spot. You just want to keep him guessing, keep him off balance. You know, I missed there. I left it a little bit in the middle. Uh, but if you could dot that up, you know, you'd be going fantastic. And you really can throw, you know, you can throw this fastball at any time. You want to throw the up and in fastball like 102 with the stinky cheese? You can. Now, how do you use the splitter? The splitter, I'd never try to spot. The splitter goes right down here, just goes down. We'll throw it with 0 and 2, you know? We'll throw it 0 and 2, especially to a righty. We'll throw it 0 and 2, we'll just throw it down. If it hits the zone, it hits the zone. But we want this thing down and just something for them to swing over the top of. That's how it's effective. Go right back out here. I'm going to talk about a lefty real quick too. We're going to just jam it with the fastball inside. We're going to jam it with the sinker over here. And then we'll throw that slider away. You know, th that's how we're going to, to work a lefty. Since we didn't face a, a lefty in this sequence. Let's hit him into the sinker. Too fast. Let's see if I can get 100%. Normally in the actual game, I'll be like more locked in on getting perfect releases and stuff like that. But that's that's really how you want to pitch with Chapman. All right, now we're going to talk about Lee Smith. Another one of my favorite pitchers to use in this game. Just because he's so tall that it's very difficult to pick up the, the ball from him. And his fastball looks like way faster, faster in my opinion. Right on right. We're, we are just pounding this fastball up and in. It just looks like it's real quick coming out of his hand. Just straight up heat out of his hand. And then we might combo that with a cutter away. You know, we can throw his cutter anywhere. I love throwing a cutter. It's so easy just to, to hit the cutter exactly where we need to, you know, on the uh, on the meter itself or on the, the pinpoint. Uh, the slider we could use, but a lot of times in 0-2, just like with Chapman, this pitch almost always strikes him out. Is this fork ball below the zone on 0-2. There's always swing over the top of it. It's way slower than that 100 miles an hour. I mean, this almost like a... I don't know how fast it goes, 83, but compared to like that 100, it's way faster. So if they're trying to sit on the fastball, you're going to be able to throw that fork ball, and it's just way, way slower. It just almost gets them to swing over the top all the time. You can even cut this cutter like right up here. And just dot that thing or just like that's a pitch they're probably going to swing over and just get a hit on or not get a hit on but like they're going to get themselves out because they're not going to have that angle to get a good hit on it slider i mean pretty much are only going to put the slider in on one spot you could throw it down there now if you want to get super crazy you know don't ever be afraid to like I don't do this enough where you throw like a fork ball up here. This is just a very difficult thing to hit on pinpoint, but that would have them way out in front. Also, if you just put the change up in like this spot too, like that's going to have them way out in front, but I like to throw it below the zone more often than anything else. So maybe we throw a one-on-one -on -one right there and then we come down here with a cutter. It's just, he's a problem. I really like using Lee Smith. All right, the last pitcher we're going to talk about in this one is Adam Wainwright. He is excellent as well. It's kind of like an extension of a starter. You know, he's got the sinker, the curveball, the cutter, the four-seam fastball, and the changeup. His curveball actually is like one of his better pitches. You don't need to utilize it too much, but it actually is a curveball that you could dot if you want to. But again, he's just got that sinker combo that we really like. You know, we love that sinker. That's super accurate. Look at that movement on that sinker too. It was like right here, and then all of a sudden it's like right down here. So it almost looks like it's like an up and in fastball, and there's bam, and 
just moves like crazy. They're going to pop that up. But this card reminds me a lot of the Mariano Rivera signature series from MLB The Shell 20 because he's got the sinker, the cutter, and he's got the really devastating changeup, in my opinion. Like the changeup that he has is very devastating. So we can go with like a cutter away, just dot city at 90 miles an hour. We can go with that sinker. We love the sinker cutter. We love the sinker cutter around here. We don't like straight fastball, so easy to hit. And then we've got this devastating changeup. It it reminds me so much of Mo's changeup, just because they're going to be out in front of it, and it's very accurate as well. And he's also got a very accurate curveball. So if you like throwing with a ton of break, so I mean that thing is a very like loopy traditional curveball. Like you can probably get a lot of people to strike out over the top of this because it looks like it's like above the zone, above the zone, above the zone, and then just goes and falls to the ground so you really got like the sinker and the cutter with great control great motion as well and then you have the nice change up especially the lefties like this change up is devastating like they need a, a big hit it's late in the game you got them down two strikes just popping in that change up they're gonna swing over the top of that change up a lot well i hope you enjoyed a video like this i mean there's more pitches that i have we just kind of ran out of innings in this recording so hopefully this helps out and hopefully it helps you kind of like utilize like the pitchers that you're going with more the ones i selected for this video are just ones that are like really glitchy like great pitchers i recommend all of them picking them all up they're all fantastic you know make your team beasts and have a great day and thanks so much for watching i'll talk to you soon peace